Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, if you thought it couldn't get any worse, Windows is actually making the update process worse. Only this time it's going to mess up the business guys rather than all the home users. So, of course, a TLDR about the entire issue and the controversy behind the Windows. Right about the time Windows 8.1 comes out, some guy at Microsoft's coming in. Look at all of these QA people we have working here. Why don't we just dump all of them and have the basically have the the computing world be our beta testers and then a few months later we'll roll out the what the beta tester results is to the rest of the corporate world well yeah no more for that so now the corporations will get the beta testing right along with the rest of us Woohoo! and that's why i switched to linux people well one of many reasons i switched to linux however uh, what happens here is uh, we have our article here coming from uh, Ars Technica. Increase my window size a little bit there. So Windows is making yet another change to the updates. So prior up to this point in time, uh, we had a couple different channels. We had the semi-annual channel and the semi-annual channel targeted. All right, so what's going on here is the, the targeted is kind of like the official release but the semi-annual channel is kind of what the, the customers get. So literally, we have become the beta testers for Windows 10 in the personal sector. Now, the businesses have the ability to defer things longer. They can set the upgrade channels and they can set to only upgrade a certain period of time after the actual final real corporate release, which usually lagged behind the public release because what happens is they push it out to all the public and they, they, they don't roll it all out instantly. It's not that bad, but it's pretty bad. They roll it out to a select number of users and then feedback comes in about what breaks and then they, it's literally like an acceptable loss thing. You, you see Fight Club, right? You, you, the guys there talking about the acceptable losses, you know, if if this times this times this times this is less than the cost of the recall, we're not going to do the recall. We're just going to pay out the lawsuits when, you know, people die, whatever. And so Windows has adopted effectively the same model where they roll it out and then they deal with the acceptable losses and then they keep rolling it out to more and more people. And then once it's rolled out, then they roll out the final to the business world and then the business guys can either accept them immediately or on a 30 or 60 or whatever day delay. And so what happens is now all of the regular basic home users and basic consumers are getting their Windows updates. And then all of this thing, and this is what caused the, uh, was it the 1809 snafus where they issued it? It was like doing massive things like deleting files and all sorts of other weird stuff. So they retracted it and then they re-released it. And then there were some other issues with Outlook. All of this is because Windows does not employ any QA people anymore. The end user is the QA team. So if you're trying to do anything really productive, you might just wake up one day with all your stuff deleted. I hope you got a backup strategy. You might wake up with a non-booting system because they don't really test it anymore. You know, three or four hipsters, they got, yeah, yeah those things work fine for me, man. Uh, and then they just roll it out. Well, what's happening is with the 1903, they're getting rid of the SACT channel. So basically now the release happens and now the businesses are now on the same exact release schedule as everybody else. So here's the actual explanation of it from Microsoft, which came out just a couple days ago on Thursday. So they are retiring the SACT. So basically what would happen is in the old way of doing a corporate deployment of Windows, what you would have is the option to select either the semi-annual channel or the semi-annual targeted channel. The targeted lags behind the SAC channel. And then you could do, there's two other drop downs here. One of these is uh, update features, new capabilities and improvements can be delayed and then quality updates can be deployed. So in other words, two different separate channels here. One of these for feature upgrades, one of these for security updates. Now these are things you will not have the option to do in the home environment, but in the enterprise environment of Windows, you have it. So they're dropping the SACT, basically meaning that there's no, here's a release, and then a few months later, here's a release. All right. 
Now it's all, here's the release. Now, for a one-time bonus deal on the 1903, if you had set the targeted, they are delaying the 1903 updates by an extra 30 days. But going forward, that drops down and you can only delay the update, I think, up to 60 days now. So going back to that entire snafu with the 1903, which was doing things like randomly deleting people's files, bricking their network cards. You know, if your Windows 10 bricks the network card, you're kind of sunk. You can't get online to fix your computer, all right? You got to get an internet connection somewhere else, download the ISO, wipe the whole machine. I mean, it's a mess. Outside, I guess you could take it somebody who knows the ins and outs and install the drivers manually. You can always do that as well. But then, of course, next time it gets on the internet, it says, your drivers are out of date. Update your drivers, and it bricks again. Brick, 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 because this is why I switched to Linux. All right, so... With all of these snafus, now they are literally decreasing the amount of time corporations have to update their Windows Enterprise systems. Bravo, Windows. Bravo. May I take this time to suggest, instead of focusing a lot on this, maybe you should start thinking about moving your business operations over to a Linux system. Hey, Calculate's designed for this type of deployment. Several other systems are designed for this type of deployment. Yeah, I understand. There's some cases that you can't. There's unfortunately too many proprietary software packages that only work with Windows, which is def definitely unfortunate. But, you know, for us home users, guys, we don't have a lot of excuses. Uh, a lot of the things that we do as regular home users and things, and I say regular home users, I run businesses from my home. Um, I don't have enterprise edition of Windows laying around anywhere is kind of my point. Uh, most of us can accomplish the things we need to accomplish on Linux. Gaming might lag somewhat behind. I understand Pizza either just released or is releasing soon a video saying, you know, the gaming thing in Linux isn't actually all that bad anymore. Sure, you may not be able to get your, you know, uh, whatever you call your most recent releases. I don't know. I'm not a gamer. I don't know. Um, but... Guys, anything else you can do, and that's really what this channel is about, is teaching you how to do real productive things, not just installing Linux in a corner somewhere, oh, look what I can get my computer to do, but how to actually get real world things done on Linux. That's my ultimate purpose and task with this channel. So with Windows coming out and totally screwing up the updates for everybody, <laughs> what's your plan? Do you have one? Sounds fun, doesn't it? <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you for making it to the end of this Switch to Linux video. You can have a look at another video right on over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to Think Life Media, which is my own personal support page. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.